So the European Parliament sent a very powerful message, recognising Juan Guaido as interim president. Uh, where does your party and where do you stand on that? Well, we didn't vote that resolution. We abstained on it. Uh, not because we have any sympathy for the Maduro regime, uh, which is basically driving the country into the abyss, but also because we do not believe that well, self-proclaiming, self-proclamation is the right way to ensure a democratic transition. So instead of doing like uh, 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 President Trump and taking sides, basically, I think the European Union should rather propose its mediation and try to find a negotiated uh, exit to this. Crisis. Quite obviously, as far as we are concerned, the Maduro regime needs to go, but what we want is a peaceful transition. And right now, I'm not sure that this is the way we are So do you headed. think that move was dangerous? Do you think it was a dangerous move by the European Parliament? It was that? not only dangerous, it was politically motivated. I, I don't know why, but Venezuela has, has become a sort of... Uh, totemic uh, thing uh, between the right and the left in the European Parliament and I'm not sure that this serves any good purpose. Uh, it's, uh, well, the, uh, the Sakharov Prize was given uh, uh, last year to the uh, Venezuelan opposition and that was basically giving uh, giving the possibility to the opposition to deliver a very aggressive speech in the uh, uh, European Parliament. Again, uh, I am not sure that this is the wisest way for Europe to take part in resolution uh, in the resolution of the crisis in Venezuela. Well, I'd like now to turn to some other issues facing Europe and obviously the EU, Britain are in the grips of Brexit. Yeah. Now, Theresa May is desperately trying to get her withdrawal deal through Parliament. Isn't it time that the EU showed a little bit more flexibility towards her? Yeah, but again, I mean, this is really a gross misrepresentation of things. It's not that we are inflexible. The thing is that the Good Friday Agreement is inflexible. I mean, if you wanted to reach peace 20 years ago in, in, uh, in Northern Ireland, well, you had to find a constructive ambiguity. And that constructive ambiguity was to allow the reunification of the island without doing it. So the unionists would be happy because they would stay in the United Kingdom and the republicans would be happy because, well, actually, uh, for their daily lives, it's as if Northern Ireland was reunited with Ireland. And one condition for that was uh, the absence of any border between Northern Ireland and the rest of the island. And that was made possible by the common membership of both the UK and the Republic of Ireland to that thing called the European Union. Now, if the UK withdraws, it, it saps the basis of the Good Friday Agreement. So it has to replace that missing foundation by something else that performs the same effect. And that, was, that is a backstop. That, and, and what we propose is to say, well, the problem or, or the constraint lies in Ireland, so let's give special treatment to Northern Ireland so that we preserve the Good Friday Agreement and we free the rest of the United Kingdom to do its own free trade deals and all the rest of it. And it was at the British government's insistence that we extended this backstop to the entire United Kingdom. We, EU27, were not that happy uh, doing that. We would have preferred a special treatment for Northern Ireland, but we conceded a whole EU, uh, UK backstop and now they're not happy with that. So I sense frustration. Is there Absolutely. A Absolutely, there's a lot of frustration because there's a persistent denial of reality by many uh, British politicians, or, or, they, or they fake denial of reality. Actually, they know the constraints, but they pretend that they don't exist. And it's, it's the, the, these damn Europeans who are, who are inflexible. But what they are asking us, and that must be very clear, would be to accept the UK having its own trade policy, its own regulations, that is all fine. And then to open, well, we should open a 500 uh, kilometers plus back door into the single market because what they say is that we will diverge from you guys. We are going probably to reduce environmental standards, social standards, fis fiscal standards. But then what we want you is not to police the border between Northern Ireland and, and the UK and, and the Republic, basically allowing goods to enter the European Union without any checks. Well, they, they wouldn't even need a free trade agreement after that because, well, they would have an, a wide door open into the single market without any checks. How can they ask that, that, that from us? I mean, it's as if we Europeans would say to the Brits, you want control of your borders for the people. We agree with that in principle, but we ask you not to control them. So any person 
stepping into the UK would not be controlled. They would never accept this. Well, why should we accept free trade of goods uh, without any control so when they diverge? Another thorny issue that is uh, facing the European Union, obviously, is these European elections, which are yeah. really around the corner. And populists are expected to make big gains. And many are arguing that with those gains, the EU could start to be destroyed, wrecked from within. How much of a threat is that, in your opinion? Well, actually, the inroads of the national populists have already started last time. I mean, they are present in four political groups in Europe. Uh, that is the uh, ENF group, where Marine Le Pen and co are sitting, the EFDD group, where Nigel Farage and co are, are, are sitting, the ECR group of the British Tories, where the Polish peace is sitting, and the EPP group, where uh, Viktor Orban is sitting. So, I mean, they... They have, they have invaded many political groups in the European Union. So Invaded, that's a very strong word, isn't it? Yes. Are they not allowed to hold these political be beliefs which are represented by they, a lot of people in Europe? No, but yeah, they, 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 they have all legitimacy holding whatever beliefs they, they want. The point I'm making is that traditional parties, and especially the European People's Party, the biggest grouping to which Angela Merkel, Jean-Claude Juncker belong, well, that group has allowed far-right ideas and far-right parties to basically become members. Of course, you might say Viktor Orban, when, when Fidesz uh, joined EPP, did not lead a far-right party, but it has become one. And, well, then you have to make a decision. And that is the problem. And on, on the left, I mean, when you look so at... So should, should Viktor Orban's party be kicked out of the EPP, in your opinion? Well, I think that if EPP wants to be a bit consistent in its, uh, its policies, then, of course, I do not see how Viktor Orban belongs there. But so you see quickly, increasingly... Sorry, let me interrupt you very yeah. quickly, but obviously you represent the Greens here. Yeah. Um, so are you, will the losses of, the potential losses of the EPP, the Social Democrats as well, could, could that be the gains for the Green parties in this election? Well, actually, I think so. And when you look at the elections that took place in, in October in Bavaria, in Luxembourg, in Belgium, what we witnessed there is that uh, for people disgruntled by the neoliberal uh, policy making that we've seen the last 30 years in Europe, you might have thought until then that the only alternative option was the national populists. And what, what appeared then is that the Greens provide also a credible alternative. And yes, indeed, we might gain uh, in the next European election. The, the thing is that I do not believe that uh, the national populists will have a majority in the European Parliament, but actually this sort of condominium that we had between EPP and the Socialists, mm -hmm. where EPP set the line and the Social Democrats in exchange for a few positions would support that line, well, th those two groupings won't have a majority. And then, well, maybe Liberals and Greens will exert bigger influence, but rest assured that, well, I would say that those committed to the further uh, improvement of the, and, and construction of the European Union will still hold a majority after the election. We are, we are working hard on that, but I'm confident. When I talk to people, I do not sense that the majority of European citizens want to get rid of the European Union. Most of them want to see a di di different direction in policy making in Europe. OK, well, European elections are a defining moment for oh, Europe. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us, Philip Lambert, uh, from the Greens European Free Alliance Group.